Okay, sure. So I'm gonna move here. Okay. So we start with a piece that I like from Edie Harris's work. She calls this American Entitlement. And this is a digital composite. Edie has the next section of the studio over behind uh, Tammy, Tammy's left shoulder. And um, Edie is somebody who's been very helpful to me in hanging the work uh, a couple weeks ago and learning more about how the studio and the gallery itself work in total. So, you want to walk in closer? And sure, see yeah. Um, I, I think I mentioned to you I was here last week, and I, I actually purchased this one right here. Yes, I like very much too. I actually purchased that one for my son-in-law because he's into diving. And I just love the colors. But yeah, if you want to, what did you want to, to? I just want to point out that people can learn more about Edie by going to the Vine Arts Center website. And most artists have got their own brief piece posted to the Vine Arts Center webpage. Oh, okay. And you can get there independently, Vine Arts Center, or through Facebook. Okay. Edie also has a recently published book. Let's go for a wander. Story and photographs by E. Marie Terrace, Edith Marie Terrace. So you can get a sense of how she takes people through her work in the neighborhoods. So I, that's a, a, an interesting spin on children's books, huh? Say again? It's a nice way to, to introduce a children's book. Yes. Cool. So that's what Edie's got posted and shared. We'll go back into the Mark Roberts Gallery and show you the work of Raven Miller. Okay. Where did you want to start? Well, at the beginning. Okay. When we were hanging this uh, gallery a couple of weeks ago, I, I was kidding Raven about the need to put either this framed or the life size of David outside <laughs> the main entry so people can know what they're in for when they come in to visit. <laughs> Instead of getting all the way in and um, having their eyes pop out. <laughs> in, in terms of timing, David was hot in the news. Oh? In various other states with rules and regulations and pushback about art and nudity. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. I, I haven't watched enough news lately to... So. Huh. You said was hot. What do you mean was? Pardon me? You said David was hot? David. Yes. The uh, the work, yes. Okay. This particular work or David the statue? Uh, the original. The, this, uh, the statue of David okay. was, was held up as an example of why some states don't want to be, um, what's the word here? There are some states presently who are all about limiting access to things like nudity and art, and books. Books. So I, I won't belabor that point. <laughs> okay. States talking about closing libraries, for example, Texas. Right. There's a small town in Texas that yesterday, was in yesterday's news, where people upset about a small handful of books that suddenly became hundreds of books that people don't want their kids exposed to in public libraries. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But a book never shot up a classroom. Yeah. Is the meme that I saw, which was I thought was pretty poignant. So. All right, you get photos of that. Yep. Okay. A snippet on Mark Roberts, a former member, and who's to this name this particular gallery is dedicated. He 
is deceased? To see. And we're back in the main gallery now. This is the work of John Box. And people that, that come in, this was nice. Um, different price ranges. Yeah, what John is hung here is primarily uh, uh, exemplifying the Southwest. Lots of work, there are a lot of places that I want to go. At the Southwest? You're interested in looking at Southwest? Yeah. I like this one. I like color. They have the beautiful, um, one of my friends um, has been spending a lot of time out there with her daughter and, and the sky. She keeps sending pictures of just the sky because of, of the blueness of it. Okay. And this one really caught my eye. And this one. Coming over to the wall that holds my work now. Yep, this. this piece I call Silver Threads, The Path is Lighted. Captured on the walkway across from the main beach of Theodore Worth Park. Oh. And just outside the boundaries of Eloise Butler. Okay. Wildflower Garden and Bird Sanctuary. Milkweed. Reminds me of an angel. Yeah. It's amazing that something like milkweed is that spectacularly beautiful. It's fun. Photography is all about finding and catching the light, and that's one of the examples that I like most about what I've been able to do. Mm -hmm. Sunshine, shadows. Speaking the working of monarch is important to me because uh, pollinators are so critical to us staying alive. And this particular image was from the gardens at uh, Lake Harriet Rose Garden. Uh -huh. And I'm partial to this one because it shows how nature, you know, her perfection is also imperfectness. A monarch who had been uh, in some kind of clash or collision with something else or somebody else, the hole in the wing. This piece that's right here mm -hmm. almost looks like it's like you added that. It's so. Um... No, it's actually a hole in the wing. Oh, it is. Oh. I stood and looked at that for the longest time. I didn't, I couldn't figure that out. Wow, that's fascinating. Huh. And then he'll have the honey, honey eyes. Honey is from the um, Johnny Fish sunflowers a field that was planted a couple of years ago across the street from the Buffalo Alina Clinic where they had a shooting where one of the Alina staff was murdered. When was that? How long ago was that? Uh, February of 21, I think. Now, Johnny Fish is a local realtor who for many years was finding and planting an acre or two or four or five of sunflowers and dedicating the field to specific populations. This one, shooting victims in Buffalo, Minnesota. And he did this out of pocket for many years. His theme is spread the sunshine. And finally, at the end of last year, he sold off his farm equipment he and his wife had emptied this account and that account, and mm -hmm. it took him a long time to ask for financial help, and he did so, uh, but he finally had to give it up. You can find him and his work on YouTube, Johnny Fish, Spread the Sunshine. But this is yours. Yeah, so framing and matting of mine all are done by Howard Christopherson at Icebox Framing and Gallery over Northeast at the Northrop King Building. Okay. Howard's a wonderful guy and 
magnificent craftsman. And yes, I love Howard Christopherson and Icebox. <laughs> Flat top with fenders, another piece from one of Johnny Fish's fields. This was at um, Kimball, and the field was planted to honor veterans. I'd never been to Kimball, so it was a nice drive on a very, very hot day. Out there by St. West of St. Cloud, right? Kim, uh, Kim, I, yeah, West. I, I don't remember how far. Maybe Northwest. I'm sorry, go ahead. I like to look for the bottoms up or side profile, unusual angle mm -hmm. of field tending more than most. Did you have to get down on the ground? Hmm? Did you have to get down on the ground to actually get that angle? Uh, or, or was this it? This one I'm pretty oh, sure I had to kneel. I don't recall that if this was anything greater than shoulder height or head height. Because these from this perspective, looks like they're not yeah. that tall. Were they tall? Do you remember? Sunflowers are generally sticking way uh, Again, I, I, without going back and looking at other images, I believe this was shoulder height, maybe head height. Mm -hmm. What caught your eye about this? Say again? What caught your eye about this particular? Uh, again, just the, uh, uh, the, the the distinction between the, the fresh growth and the wilting, wilting of the yellow. And this, again, this was a, a, in a very, very hot stretch of summer days. So while I don't recall how many days that this was from planting and sprouting, they were beginning to go already. Mm -hmm. But lots of contrast. So there. It's a contrast between the old and the new. Mm -hmm. Another piece from Lake Harriet Rose Gardens. The rose called the Artistry. And um, I call it more such kissable lips. I'd taken many over the years there and I fell into sensing that this was. Georgia O'Keeffe talking to me. It does. Yeah, Georgia. One Keith. of the earliest that I captured in that vein, I, I titled Kissable Lips. And then there probably was such kissable lips, and now more such kissable lips. Hmm. And for folks who don't spend any time around the city lakes, Lake Harriet and the Rose Gardens and the Peace Garden and the Japanese Garden are all worth your time to go and visit. I've got to get down up there one of these days. My dad used to go, like, be out there. I'm watching over you, the single rose taken from a bouquet after the funeral of a childhood friend of mine. And, uh, so this was at, pardon me? This was part of his funeral? This was a bouquet at the funeral, the graveside service. Right. And everybody left. I picked up one rose from the bouquet, placed it on a nearby headstone, and wanted, wanted the angle with the background of the tree and the background of the blue sky. And very coincidentally, this childhood friend whom I hadn't seen in many years, buried about 100 yards from my parents and other family. So special to me in that way. Which you didn't realize until you got out there? Well, I, I knew where I was going. Yeah. But I didn't know where the grave site was going to be mm -hmm. until I got there. Huh. I'm sorry for your loss. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Overcast butt shots, another piece of Johnny work, Johnny Fish's spread the sunshine work. 
This was the first of the fields that I got introduced to a couple of years ago at Dayton. And people who know sunflowers know they lean a certain way according to where the sun is or isn't. I wanted this because of the touch of drama in the sky. That's very ominous looking, and, isn't and it? The barn and the silo on the right, bottom right corner. It looks like they're bowing. Pardon me? It looks like they're bowing to the darkness. Well, they do that. They absolutely do bow. Again, I'm struck that um, usually when I see photography of sunflowers, these are opposite angles mm -hmm. because usually it's you're looking up and people want to show how high they are yeah. and they look so... And they do get dramatically tall. Right. But you like to show them um, grounded. I, I, I tend toward the quote unquote out of the ordinary mm -hmm. whenever I can. Mm -hmm. What a collection, those three together. Okay. And we have another example of, of, of what I consider my, my eye or my leaning, a uh, couple more frames over. Water lilies reflected, pretty simple title, pretty simply reflecting what's going on at Marjorie McNeely Conservatory, Como Zoo. Oh, sure. This is one of the outdoor pools. And um, that reflection it, is. It's, it is the reflection that catches me. So I, I often don't, I often don't care what's around the reflection. This one, I, I like this image because I could get the beginning and end of the lily pad. But more importantly, the reflection of the flowers themselves on the water. Uh -huh. So th this is the image I think a lot of photographers might be tempted to Photoshop out the vertical lines. Um, reflecting from the conservatory building. The structure. Of the, the structure itself. It's reflected in the water. Not so important to me. Um, okay. Final one on this wall, I call Pink Century Profile. This is on a Lake Harriet. Rose Garden item. In this one, I, I try to get the, the again, uh, old and new. You've got the petals wilting away at the bottom. You've got the new bud framing the right, the right edge. And you've got blue sky again. So most people know what a flower looks like. They see it from a face. Face view most often. And I love face views of flowers, um, but I also look for more than that. And what do you see in this one with the, with the yellow? The yellow is, is just the, the interior coloration. Flowers have more than more to show than many of us realize. I feel like behind us. Where? Oh! Hiding on a sidewall, short wall. One that I call red aspen tulips taken at the Lakewood Cemetery Garden. This uh, directly across the street from the uh, main entry. Left of the main entry and across the street from the main building at Lakewood Cemetery. Mm -hmm. 
And what time of year was that? Or well, I mean, this would have been April, I think, or May. I have to go back and look, April or May. Uh, much like the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board staff take care of our gardens at places like Harriet, our local cemeteries have staff who put their care and their touch into the grounds and into growing things like this. Mm -hmm. So this section, I believe, is still under construction this year. I'm not sure what access there might be to the tulip beds this coming season. Do you have a website? You must have a website. You must have a website. I do not have a website in action. My website is in a state of perpetual development. <laughs> Okay. Some, some might call it childhood, but it's perpetual. <laughs> I, I did have other work showing. I, I think you might have touched on the monitor in front of the rose buds. There's uh, about ten minutes of other stuff mm -hmm. showing. I did. I did watch the cycle through this when I was here. Showing other work around the community and, and partial to local music scene. And partial to water and painted turtles. Oh. I'm partial to La Luna. It's that yellow and pink again. And so there's just other yeah. 10 minutes of other examples of what I do mm -hmm. when I'm out. And you don't have that on a website? What the? Your website. Is that on your website? I, I don't have a website that works. Okay. I might get there someday. You're worse than me. <laughs> you put it on Facebook because that's what you know. That's it. Facebook is my... Uh, but, so, but somebody has got to curate this it, it, stuff. Yeah. It, it's my staffing place. But uh, I just haven't put any energy into the website. I for, totally for I totally understand. <laughs> there, there's another example of the odd angle of the backside. Mm -hmm. How do we fight? You can take that. It might not have been obvious to come How we fight climate change? Okay, I'm going to take a picture. Go ahead and take a picture. 